You're probably here because you're looking for the answer to the question, what is social identity theory? In this video, you will not only know the definition for social identity theory, but you will also meet the theorists, understand how social identity theory works, learn the history that created the theory, and understand social identity theory through an example. So first things first, the definition. Social identity theory is a person's sense of who they are based on their group membership or memberships. As individuals, we exist within a variety of groups that make us, us. Now we will meet the theorists. Henri Tajval and John Turner are the brains behind social identity theory. As social psychologists, they were interested in understanding how people interact and exist. So in their conclusion, social identity theory states that the in-group will discriminate against the out-group to enhance their self-image. Now, what is the in-group? The in-group is the group an individual wants to be a part of, the favored group. So what's the out-group? You guessed it, the group an individual does not like and doesn't want to be involved with. In other words, the in-group is the us, and the out-group is the them. There is a clear distinction based on favoritism and derogation. In Taj Bell and Turner's study, An Integrative Theory of Intergroup Conflict, they broke down social identity theory into three components, social characterization, social identification, and social comparison. In social characterization, an individual decides what group or groups they belong to. An individual can belong to many groups at one time. Once this cognitive process is complete, the next cognitive process begins, which is social identification. In social identification, an individual determines how compatible they are with the group. They have to make sure that they fit in within the norms of the group to see if they should join. Once they identify with the group, they develop an emotional significance that their self-esteem then depends on. This leads into the third cognitive process, which is social comparison. In this process, an individual compares themselves within the in-group to an out-group to enhance their self-esteem. This process also helps maintain their self-esteem, which is a form of loyalty to their in-group. In the cognitive process of social comparison, we also see the development of prejudice and discriminatory thoughts because of our competitive nature as humans. It should be highlighted, though, that Tajbal understood these consequences but he viewed groups as a positive, and that the social comparison aspect of social identity theory would lead to the improvement of individuals for the overall improvement of the group. Now we will meet Michael A. Hoggs and Dominic Abrams, other minds that have contributed to social identity theory. As social psychologists, they also wanted to explore the concept of intergroups. So building upon Taj Valen Turner's theory, they came up with their own definition for social identity theory. A social identity is a person's knowledge that he or she belongs to a social category or group. According to Hogg and Abrams, Self-characterization and social comparison produce different consequences. The social categories that individuals place themselves in are designed and constructed by the society and exist only in relation to other contrasting 
categories. This is to say that the social comparison aspect of social identity theory is crucial to the self-categorization process because an individual is trying to place themselves into the best self-esteem enhancing group. Now, a little history about social identity theory. Minimal group paradigm. Taj Bell created this paradigm to understand how humans formed groups. Minimal group paradigm is the rough draft, if you will, of social identity theory. And it was created in order to test subsequently the necessary and sufficient conditions for in-group favoritism and out-group derogation. The four social identity theory and minimal group paradigm, there was conflict theory. Karl Marx created this theory to explain that society is always in conflict due to the inequalities between social classes. Conflict theory is the us versus them mentality in a political realm when social identity theory is the us versus them mentality with an inner group communication. Now an example. You exist because of the multiple groups you are a part of and associate yourself with. One of the first groups you exist within is your family. Whether it's by blood or by relation, your family helps construct who you are. Another group you may belong to that constructs your identity is your sexual orientation. This could be a clear marker of where you stand within society based on the person you love. If you're a religious individual, your religion can also be a determining factor of your identity because religion is the basis of your lifestyle. A hobby can also be a determining factor of your identity. If you consider yourself an artist and you exist within a group of other artists, you find self-esteem and identification by being a part of this group. You also exist within a group at your place of employment the position you hold can give you a self-esteem that you probably wouldn't have if you didn't work there. You might be a student at Cal State LA. Within this group of like-minded individuals on campus, you automatically are exposed to different diversity in different groups of people and that can have a different effect on who you are as an individual. Maybe as a student at Cal State LA you are a communication major. This could explain what kind of student you are within the classroom and give you a separate identification from students from other majors like the sciences or mathematics or English. And if you are a communication major that strives for perfect grades, you might be a part of the honor society Lambda Pi Eta Sigma Phi. Within this group, you strive for a great GPA and you want great grades, so you associate yourself with like minds that are also trying to achieve what you are achieving. And if you are a part of Lambda Pi Eta, you might also be a part of the National Communication Association, which is the umbrella that encompasses all communication scholars, which is something you might want to be a part of if you're 
driven within the communication major and the field. I hope this example has put into perspective how social identity theory can be adapted to you or how it can be used to identify other people. If you're looking for more references for better understanding on social identity theory, this is a list of the scholars you can turn to for more clarification.